Anaerobic respiration in mammals follows the lactate pathway and it's the reason we can sprint and do exercise like weightlifting or powerlifting. Now in yeast, it can be used to produce ethanol, which is important in the production of products like beer and wine, or even bread. So the bubbles in bread are carbon dioxide bubbles that go through the dough as yeast respires anaerobically. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover everything you need to know for AQA A-Level Biology to get top marks in the exam. So stay tuned guys, this is gonna be a good one. Anaerobic respiration, AQA A-Level Biology. So how is anaerobic respiration different to aerobic? Well, anaerobic respiration just involves glycolysis, whereas aerobic respiration not only involves glycolysis, it also involves the link reaction, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Now, I've released a video on all of those key processes in aerobic respiration, so be sure to check them out. So anaerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm, whereas aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria, at least from the link reaction onwards anyway. Anaerobic respiration gives a net gain of two ATP, whereas aerobic respiration gives a net gain of 32 ATP, but you may see it represented as 32 to 38, depending on which textbook you look at. Now, finally, in anaerobic respiration, pyruvate is converted to ethanol in yeast or lactate in animals. So let's have a closer look at glycolysis because it is the first stage of anaerobic respiration. Well, as mentioned earlier, it occurs at the beginning of both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Now, stage one is phosphorylation, and basically phosphate is added to glucose from ATP. And the glucose becomes glucose phosphate when one phosphate is added, and then it becomes hexose bisphosphate when a second phosphate is added. Now, the second stage is oxidation, and here we have the formation of pyruvate from triose phosphate. Now, it's called oxidation because NAD is converted to reduced NAD. And because of that, the triose phosphate is oxidized, becoming pyruvate. Now, in this second stage, we have the production of four molecules of ATP. And because we use two ATP at the beginning, that gives us an overall net gain of two ATP per glycolysis reaction. So let's look at the lactate pathway next of all. Now this is also known as lactate fermentation and it incurs in animals and certain bacteria. Now lactate in animals such as mammals is transported back to the liver in the blood where it will then be reconverted back into pyruvate. And NAD is formed from reduced NAD which is gonna allow the continued production of ATP via glycolysis. So if we look at the reaction on the right-hand side, we can see pyruvate is converted to lactate and we have reduced NAD converted to NAD. Now remember, you must know that glycolysis cannot occur without NAD to oxidize it. So next of all then, the ethanol pathway, AKA alcoholic fermentation. Well, the pyruvate produced during glycolysis is converted into ethanol in yeast and plants. CO2 is released here, and that's responsible for the bubble-like structure in a slice of bread. So next time you look at bread, notice the bubbles there, and it might change the way you think about it a little bit, because you've got the yeast respiring anaerobically, so the bubbles flow through the dough. Now, don't worry, there's no ethanol found in bread, because cooking the bread or baking the bread causes the ethanol to evaporate. So there's no worries there, guys. Now, again, NAD is formed from reduced NAD, which allows for the continued production of ATP via glycolysis. And if we look at the reaction on the right, we have pyruvate to ethanol, releasing CO2. We then have ethanol to ethanol, producing that crucial NAD. So let's go through some exam practice next of all. So we've got this diagram here which shows glucose to pyruvate stage one and pyruvate to ethanol and CO2 stage two. So where does stage one occur for one mark? Pause the video, write down your answer and we'll go through it. So the answer is the cytoplasm. Question two, explain how stage two allows stage one to keep occurring and that's worth two marks. So pause the video and we'll go through the answer. So the answer is 
it allows NAD to be produced from reduced NAD, or you could alternately say reduced NAD to be oxidized. Our second mark is for saying NAD is reduced in stage one, which is basically glycolysis. Question three next of all, explain why a layer of oil is used in the investigation in figure one, which we can see on the right hand side now. So we can see we've got a gas syringe on the right hand side, we've got a bung in our conical flask, we've got yeast and glucose and a layer of oil above it. So pause the video and we'll go through the answer. So the answer is, it prevents oxygen from being absorbed or taken up by the yeast. So that's everything we've got time for guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.